Man, there is no way that's real. Have you guys seen some of these viral welding hacks online? Man, some of them are just absolutely too good to be true. We should try some out. Now look, you can't always believe what you see on the internet these days. That's why on today's episode, we're gonna try five of these viral welding hacks and see if they're, what the kids say, call it cap, or maybe it's AI, or if it actually works. From hacking your welding machine to clean welds instead of making them to the wild, wild east of Chinese TikToks. We're gonna give them a go. The first viral hack that we ended up seeing was deglazing a flap disc with a cutting torch. I'm going to say that this isn't a really kosher behavior when it comes to proper safety. Don't ever want to take a cutting torch to a grinder at all. Why would you? But the idea is that that flap disc that you've been using starts to glaze over time and it still has a lot of meat left on the bones. How do we access some of that good material? Well, we're going to spin the grinder. We're going to torch it. We're going to see if it burns back. My hypothesis is it might give a little bit of life left, but I don't think it's going to be worth the trouble just to get a little bit of shiny back into the part. Please do not attempt to perform any of the stunts or activities on Weld.com, as they are dangerous and could lead to serious injury. All stunts are performed by a semi-professional. Video submissions of any kind are not accepted by Weld.com or the producers. Oh, that looks just absolutely ruined. I think I might have got a little carried away. Seriously though, like I don't think this is safe enough to use. All that sandpaper showing again, but I'm not using that. Luckily, I have no short supply of glazed over flap wheels. I've got another one right here. This time we're gonna try to not do so, so much. All right, that looks like we should stop. If I'm being completely honest, that looks like an absolute disaster. We did not do near as much damage on this one. Definitely less is more. It's a little bit sketchy, you know? You're not really supposed to use that, not to mention like the glue on there, keeping all this together is definitely meant to handle some heat, but not necessarily torch heat. So we're gonna run it on this rusty, cruddy stuff and see if it cuts any better than it did. We keep perfectly PPE'd up though. Now look, I'm not gonna tell you how you guys should use your abrasives and by the end of it, it would start to get glazed over just again. And you're gonna have a really hard time explaining it to any safety guy if they see you doing that type of work. But for lack of better words, compared to the first side on this part to the second, it works. It's a Hail Mary on that flap disc, like that's it. Like you're giving it all right there, but it works. Now I know y'all seen some pretty crazy stuff on the internet. This one's one of them. It's like, dang dude, that's freaking impressive. No, nothing. Just scooting a TIG torch on the side. Like the amount of like experience and times he's done that. Surely he's done it a billion times. We're gonna try to recreate that outside corner joint that that fella just welded. We got a similar setup, call it body, thumb switch on off. We got the machine kind of set up to something really simple. The amount of speed he's going, he's gotta be running pretty quick. Tungsten shape, I've got a sharp end and I got a square end. Because him holding it at that crazy angle's got something to do with it too. We're gonna have to wear a hood though. I do not have a whole lot of faith in this. And it obviously can be done, but I don't have a lot of faith in myself. Let's see how fast we can move at 100 amps, and then we're gonna see just how fast we can cook with it. I've got just the tiniest little notch on this cup too. My first attempt is gonna be something like this, dragging it on that outside. I can see why it's kind of difficult because I'm just like rolling around, just sliding. I need to make that notch way, way crazier. Probably get a really close tungsten stick out. All right, let's try. Go, 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 go,
that definitely could be done. I don't know how that dude just like, I was staring at it and I missed a bunch of spots. But I, I completely think it's possible. You're just gonna need a little bit of practice. I bet that dude does it daily, every day, for years. Dude, honestly, I'm pretty impressed with myself a little bit and the fact that that was possible. I mean, it goes against all welding theory on how that dude was doing it. I did replay the footage. I was not going near as fast as I thought I was. That's probably why it's got a lot of gray and a lot more oxidation than buddies. That dude was flying, and I think that's the secret to it. I think you just need to practice a lot more. That was the first attempt, so I'm pretty proud of it. Now we're gonna learn how we can take this TIG torch and turn it into a weld cleaning system and passivate and clean this whole weld joint, even though it looks like absolute butt. We're gonna polish this turd. Look guys, I know what we're doing on today's episode is a bit out of left field. We wanna stress the importance of safety and wearing your PPE. And there's no one we trust more than Ariat Workwear and Ariat FR when it comes to keeping us safe. No matter what you need, it's on their website from bibs, pants, welding shirts, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts. Everything looks slick, that fits good. Something that I always go back to for more. If you look in front of me, all the boots that I had here, these are all Ariat boots, anywhere from a year old to I think three or four years old. These are 10 years old. These are. 20 years old. I've been rocking Ariat almost my entire life, and that's why I keep going back for more. These aren't the only brand boots I own, but there's a reason why I keep coming back, and that's because of the quality and the consistency that they always have. If you're getting down and dirty, what I really like to get into is anything with this covered toe. But if I want some extra support, I'm gonna hook up with these little ratchets right here. Those ratchets will just wrap around your ankles so tight, man, you got all the support in there, and you can just pop them loose and loosen them up, and it's like a freaking house shoe. And of course, we have the Benchmade boots. Boots. Those we wear out to uh, fancy dinners and weddings and boot scooting boogieing, you know. But I just want to stress the importance of PPE and looking sharp. Area Workwear's got you covered. Now, if I'm being honest, I don't really know a whole lot about those weld cleaning systems. But after I saw this short, I was like, dang, dude, this is a freaking game changer. I've got to try it, right? So we've taken our TIG torch that we just had. We removed it from the hose and we put on a Series 9 TIG torch here. The collet body of the Series 9 fits both this brush that I found on Amazon. This is a weld cleaning brush. I don't really know the, the specs on it, but it did fit the collet body threads and those threads also fit inside the torch. So I just cut off a piece of that collet body and was able to use it as a coupler. And we also have our on and off switch. We have a 2T remote on our welding machine. This is a AC welding machine. So we have to switch from DC to AC. And what we're going to do is drop our amperages really low because this is a TIG welder, not a weld cleaning system. We can cook this freaking thing if we don't do it right. We're going to have soft square as far as the balance. We've got our frequency set. I'm not sure what this will really do, if anything, but I'm sure the balance control in between 30 and 70 is really going to make a difference. We're going to have our lift arc set up on a remote so that this little thumb switch tells the machine I can touch that material and then hit it. I don't want to have any gap in there. If I do, it's going to arc like crazy. We got some of that Surflox weld cleaner too. <laughs> We're going to see if this works, man. I'm excited. I really don't know what to expect. Again, this is a welding machine, not a weld cleaning system. So I'm still going to put my gloves on. I'm going to treat it as if I was welding just in case some arcing happens. This spot right here looks like it's got plenty of oxidation. So we're gonna see if it removes that like heat affected zone and more importantly, that really gray stuff. We can dip it in our weld cleaning fluid. Hopefully it doesn't, okay, it doesn't arc off until we hit the button. So let's get a little safer, see if this works. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, it's so smoky. I don't know if it's supposed to smoke like that. Ooh, don't lift that brush up. Don't lift the brush up. I think I can trim this, make it more brushy. Yeah, that looks more brushy. I feel like I can have more contact there without arcing off too much. I bet when it starts sparking, we should probably back off that cleaning. <laughs> Look at that, dude, that's sick. That got a lot of the ugly off of it. That's pretty cool. I wanna see if it does it on this piece of pipe I got. What is this, eight inch, 10 inch, schedule 10 stainless with a nice TIG bead on there. This one is not as bad. See if it does the damn thing. It definitely gets that heat affected zone really easily, but it's not really getting after the, oh, there it goes. It's pretty good right there. I mean, you can still see it take a couple passes and we're almost completely clean. Let's see if changing that balance from 30% to 70% does any different. I feel like that's taking a lot longer, but boy, is that satisfying. The fact that I'm able to do that with my welding machine this is awesome. I love playing around with stuff that's not supposed to do the things it's supposed to do. I don't care who you are. That's cool right there. A little water. 
That pipe's been sitting out in my yard too forever. Just been collecting oxidation and that right there, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's sitting there, it's a, the best option, but the fact that it's possible, super cool. Now we all know BBs, buckshot, boogers, whatever you wanna call it. You wanna keep them off your welds. It's just a matter of keeping quality craftsmanship. You always wanna have some good anti-spatter on hand, but let's just say you run out and you don't really know what to do, but you like to do a bunch of cooking and you got a little bit of cooking spray. So we'll see if the difference between like a commercial anti-spatter on this side of a weld versus the canola oil we have for this side of the weld. And we're gonna set our machine. We're gonna try to work in that globular transfer with some spattery stuff. Try to really throw a bunch of crap all over the plate. I've prepped everything so spatter should be able to stick to it really easily. We'll start first with like your basic anti-spatter that you get from the stove. I would do an arc shot, but I don't want to get my cameras in the way of this spatter I'm about to throw down. And remember guys, we set this machine up to be aggressive with the spatter. Even if you do have a good anti-spatter, there's only so much it can do if you don't know how to set your machine properly. Lots of BBs coming off that, but as you would expect, not a whole lot of spatter stuck to the plate. Actually, none, really. So now we're gonna give this other side a go, and we're gonna throw on some basic canola oil. I don't mean, I'm sure you could use Pam, Crisco, whatever you want. Non-stick cooking spray. <laughs> it just smells like cooking in here now. I'm not seeing any porosity come up, so that's good. <laughs> sure is freaking smoky, though. It smells like someone's burning the fried chicken in here. It's definitely <laughs> starts a little bit of a fire. <laughs> Golly. Okay, well now I know why they just don't do that everywhere. I crank that fan on, bro. Golly. Let's clean this weld up and give it a look because I don't see a lick of spatter on it. Now again, I've already seen this work before, but we didn't weld very much. Just running that one bead, I can see why this isn't much of an alternative choice because that stuff was smoky. This is the anti-spatter side here. Looks like an average weld, no spatter. There's like one little BB right over here and one over there on the front and back side of it. If we just flip it over, we can see that this is a lot dirtier too. The fact that that oil is kind of baked on there, it's really greasy feeling too. I'm surprised we didn't get a lick of porosity if I'm being completely honest. There's like a little bit of spatter still on that plate. Look, if you're in a pinch and all you got is some cooking spray, it'll keep the BBs off your stuff, but make sure you wear a freaking respirator. Goodness. The next welding hack I'll show you is another TIG torch one, and it's one of my personal favorites. I saw this first back in 2018 by a friend of mine named Martin, who's a fabricator out of Southern California. All you gotta do is take the same TIG rig we used earlier. We're gonna even use the exact same settings with this little hot switch right here. You don't even need to prep the tungsten. You just need to push it in a little bit past the cup, and then all you gotta do is set that torch down, hit the trigger, and then it'll push some puddle down through that plate and make a spot weld into the next one. This works really only for thin metals with some special settings. You can actually set the timing on these new welders and fast hacks and, and doing special stuff for a lot thinner materials. This is a 16 gauge to 16 gauge. And don't get it twisted guys, while it looks really easy, you can mess this thing up in a hurry. Too much gas pressure turns this into like a tungsten gouging process and you'll blow a hole in that sheet metal really quick. But set it up right and it's pretty strong with just one little tack on there. I mean, you can see we bent that all the way around. It's a really strong little weld on there. You just gotta make sure you set that machine right. I think we've all seen those videos online of some foreigner in this like little squat position trying to do some welding on some plates and absolutely no PPE. And I just think they're absolutely hilarious. We're gonna try to recreate some of that right now. See if I can make this work. I don't know how they get this sucker lit. I'll be dang. Yeah, that's just going right there. We're just welding submerged wood welding, I believe they call it. Just like some of our other welding hats, it's pretty smoky. <laughs> oh man, it's got a bead all the way down it. Oh, let's give that a Jimmy. Well, I'll be damned. That looks better than some of y'all's welds. Oh man, 